Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about um, slope and rate of change. Essentially it's the same thing, uh, it's just the, the context that it's in. Slope represents uh, how x and y are related on a graph, whereas rate of change represents how two variables are related in more of a context situation. So anytime I do some sort of experimentation, you tend to have this kind of graph set up. And if you just extend it out, you see it's really the coordinate plane, the xy plane, that whole thing. So Essentially, I have two variables I work with. We call them x and y when we're working with a graph, but if we're working with an experiment, we tend to look at things as independent variables. And dependent variables. Now, Independent variable is the thing that would happen anyway. If I'm going to measure fruit flies, let's just say, uh, I'm going to measure them over time. Well, the time would occur whether I have fruit flies or not, so it's an independent variable. The dependent variable, in order to give it some context, I have to have the independent variable. If I tell you, I have 5,000 fruit flies, well, so what? Well, if I only had 25 fruit flies an hour ago, that might mean something to you if you're also engaged in the experiment. So dependent variable, I need to look at... Um, the independent variable to have some reference for it. Now, in order to find slope and rate of change, what I'm really looking at is the change, I'm going to make a little triangle to represent change, of the dependent variable as it relates to the change in the independent variable. And that's my rate of change. So what I'm looking at is how one changes in relation to the other. The reason that the dependent variable is on top is because that's the thing I'm looking at. I'm most interested in that aspect of the experiment. So measuring independent variable change versus dependent variable change gives me a mixed message. If I want to measure how fast a car is going, uh, I need to do miles per hour. The hours will happen anyway, but the miles is the part I'm interested in, so that needs to go on top to make my uh, rate of change information the most useful to me. If I'm looking at slope, which is the graphical side of it. If I was to look at this as a graph and I wanted to know this information, how it changes over time, uh, then I would look at slope. I'm looking at what we call rise over run. Now, the rise part would represent the y or the change in the dependent variable. The uh, run would be x change, so the change in the, in the independent variable, so rise over run is really a look at change in y over change in x. I just want to know how it moves and how it changes. So let's look at uh, some rate of change and slope questions so we can get this thing knocked out here. So the rate of change question here, uh, in the first one I want to look at the change in miles versus an hour. And in this situation it's nice because uh, I need to analyze the change in the dependent variable which is miles. So I'm just going to subtract. I'll do 130 minus 65 and I'll get 65. I do it here and then I do it here they're all changing by 65. I also need to make some comparison statement about the relationship for my independent variable. So if I was doing change in uh, dependent versus change in independent, My uh, change in dependent here would be 65. My change in independent is just 1. So I can make a statement, and it's important when I do rate of change to make a statement to what it actually means. This would be 65 miles per hour. And I need to put that kind of information in to make uh, the math teacher happy. Now in the next one I need to look at the change in the Y. So uh, my father was actually a tool maker for a uh, end 
factory, which are like when you have soda cans or whatever type of aluminum can you have, the part that you pop top. The bottom and top of those cans are actually made separately than the wraparound part that makes the can itself. So he worked in a factory that made those ends, and he was a tool maker there. So I made uh, a rate of change question about maintenance cycles and uh, how many ends were made uh, between maintenance cycles. So how often you do some maintenance on it, which is the kind of stuff he would have to do. Um, so if I was looking at the change here, if I did uh, 1 million 350,000 minus uh, 900,000, I end up with 450,000 as my change. If I'm going to do the change here uh, from 2,250,000 and 1,350,000, I'm going to look at something like 900. Thousand, and for the last one, this is a pretty big change. So uh, four million five hundred thousand to two million uh, two hundred and fifty thousand. The change is actually two million two hundred and fifty thousand. Now, in many cases, this seems the same, right? But these change so much. What do I do? Well, I have to look at the dependent variable as well, or my x or independent variable as well. So my x. This is a change of one. This is a change in two, and this is a change in five and that plays a big part in the overall change in the question. So what I'm going to do is make little fractions for each one or little ratios for each one anyway. So I'm going to mark this out and I'll do 450,000 over one. I'll do 900,000 over two and then I'll do 2,250,000 over and if I do this, I end up getting 450,000. I do this one, I get 450,000. And in case you wouldn't trust that the last one would be what I said it was, four hundred fifty thousand, just like I said. So the change that I'm making is four hundred and fifty thousand ends per cycle. Because without this part, this part is almost meaningless. So I need to make some statement that's actually useful. So let's look at, that's rate of change. Let's talk about slope. Slope is just the mathematical uh, representation of rate of change. And there's four types of slope that we need to look at. Basically, uh, graphs are read left to right. That's, the, that's an important component of it. So if I am increasing left to right, I'm going to say the type of slope here is positive. On the other side of it, if I'm going down left to right, I'm going to say it's negative. It's kind of like things are getting better or worse over time. In this case, nothing is changing. It's not going up or down. So I may say that I have a slope of 0. Sometimes it says no slope, but 0 is kind of the, the way that, write a little bigger so you can actually read it. Um, so 0 slope or 0 or no slope or whatever it happens to be, it doesn't change at all. It just goes forward and back. In this last case, if I said things were getting worse over time or better over time, in this case time stops completely. And you can't do that. So we call that undefined. It is a slope that we can't understand because it's not changing at all in our uh, independent variable and it's changing constantly in our uh, dependent variable. So it, we call that undefined. Write that a little bigger as well. Now from here that's if you have you know that kind of setup in order. So let's look at it in terms of how we can slow, or how we can find specific slopes if we're given graphs. Slopes from graphs. So in my first situation, I um, tend to have uh, ones that I can count out. These would be the axis, of course. So in this case, I know automatically that it's negative. So it's going up or down. If it's negative, you have a negative slope. So in my right upper right corner here of this one, I'm going to put a negative. I'm going to measure how much it changes. Remember, it's important to measure the change in the y over the change in the x. So I'm going to go down 1, 2 to get it on the same line as the dot that we're trying to find uh, its exact location from this one. So uh, negative 2 goes on top of my ratio. Then I just do my count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and I get negative 2 over 6. If I reduce that, I end up with a final slope of negative 1 
over 3, which makes sense. If I go down 1 and over 1, 2, 3, I'm already hitting the line. So it just follows that it would be uh, negative 1 third. You need to reduce your fraction. You need to know that it's negative. And you also need to make sure that you count. Uh, don't go back to the origin at any point. It has value in certain situations, but not in slope. Uh, the next type, you can barely even see it. This one, I'm going from here to here. So as you can see, it's just a flat change. So my change in x would be, or my change in uh, my y values would be 0. My change in x would be 1, 2, 3. And 0 divided by 3 is, of course, 0. So I have a slope of 0. If you have a flat line, it's 0. Uh, the next one, this is a positive slope. Now when I have a positive slope, I know that I'm going to go in up into the corner and put plus here to remind myself it's positive slope. I'm going to start here, and I need to go up first. I go 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I go over 1, 2. So 4 over 2. And if I reduce it, that gives me a final slope of positive 2. So that's my slope right there. Um, most of the time, you have little gridded paper that you do when you have slope questions. Just look for ones that cross over the corners. Those are the ones you can connect. If it's in the middle like this one is, it's really hard to make any uh, connection between it and another point. So find the ones that cross at the edges and that's a good strategy to get you there. And the last one of this type, uh oh. Change in y is all the time. There is no change in x. So this is one of those undefined slopes. And the reason, by the way, if I do 2 and I divide that by a change in the x value of 0, hopefully this shows up, 2 divided by 0, should be able to see if I can get the screen to work. See, it says error divide by 0 because you can't divide by 0. So it says it can't happen. So that's when you have an undefined slope. So if all else fails, just punch them in and you'll sh it'll show you that, yeah, that can't happen. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is look at slope in terms of, well, what happens if you don't have uh, a graph? You just have coordinate points. That's when I'm going to use the slope formula. So this is if I have 1, 2, and 3, 4. What if I have these? I don't have a graph. I mean, you could graph them if you want. You can go onto a coordinate plane and graph them and do what we just did. But it's easier to use the slope formula in many cases. <coughs> this is the slope formula. <coughs> Sorry. The change in y's here would be represented by how far it is from the y in the second group to the y in the first. Change in the x's, change in the distance from the x in the second group to the x in the first. That's what these mean. These little numbers have nothing to do with squaring them. If they're below the number, that's subscript. It's just a label. So I'm actually going to mark mine up. This is x. This is y. This is x. This is y. This is the second group, and this is the first group. And it really doesn't matter which one's the first group and which one's the second. The, what does matter is that you have the matching y's and x's on top of each other. So if I choose to, instead of using 4 here, I choose 2, I need to make sure that the one I start with on the bottom is 1. That keeps the reference point the same. So in this case, I'm doing 4 minus 2 over 3 minus 1. Ended up with 2 over 2, which is a final slope of positive 1. That's how you can get it done. By the way, if one of these is negative, say I had... x, y, x, y, 2, 2, 1, 1. A in this case, I would set it up negative 2 minus negative 5. That's a key issue. Because if you don't do that, it becomes a big problem. That's where people tend to make mistakes. So in this case, you'll end up with positive 3 over 2. Because negative 2 minus negative 5 is the same as negative 2 plus 5. That whole thing. So make sure you get positive 3 over 2 for that one. Let's look at a couple more, or a few more. And then that's it. It's all done. So we're at the closing points. In this case, I'm just going to mark them up. X, Y, X, Y. I'm going to look for my slope formula somewhere. You might have it on a formulas page. Or you might just remember it over time. Uh, 10 minus 17 over negative 17 minus negative 2. And the, the nice thing about it is if you have a calculator that will do fractions, a lot of times you can just do them as a fraction. 
like I have a TI-84 color that I'm using here. If I go into the fraction menu, I can actually import it as fraction or plug it in as fraction. So I'll do 10 minus 17 on top, and then I'm trying to get it up close where you can see it, but it's really blurry today. Uh, on the bottom, I'll do negative 17 minus negative 2, and I'll hit enter, and I'll get uh, 7 over 15. And the fact that you can't see it is not very helpful, so I'm going to sweeten conversation here for three seconds so that I can show you one on a calculator that actually will show you because of the way that the screen is set up. So 10 minus 17 over negative 17 minus negative 2, hit enter, and you get 7 over 15, which is very convenient to have. For this one, xy, xy, this is the second time I wrote it, this is the first time. You might want to write your formula down again. Negative 4 minus 5 over 10 minus 10. Now in this situation, the bottom part's going to get end up giving you 0. And if I divide, or I do negative 9 divided by 0, uh, undefined because it says you can't divide by 0. So my answer for this one is undefined. Can't have that. Uh, down here, uh, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. In this case, I'll end up with 0 over 24, which if you divide 0 by anything, you get a slope of 0. So that works out perfectly fine. And the last one. And the key issue here is really marking them up, I mean in the beginning anyway, before you get really used to it. Make sure you, that you mark them up appropriately, you plug the values in as intended, and then you'll get the right answer. Because the hard part is doing it wrong for a long time. And I'm going to punch this one as a fraction, just so you can see. Um, the hard part is doing them wrong for a while, and then you start mixing the signs around, and it becomes a huge problem. So just take your time in the beginning when you first see it, and you'll get nice answers like negative 2 as my final slope. And that's it. So that's all you have to do to do slope and rate of change. Hopefully uh, you find this useful.